It's big, it's bad, it's fast. JRTV is proud to present the 2004 Samsung Radio Shack 500 at the Texas Motor Speedway for the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series 2004 season, race number 9. This is one of the trickiest tracks on the schedule, and even with a week off to prepare these 42 drivers, it was just another week of anxiety for them as they look forward to this race, trying to get through it in one piece. I'm Joe Rakowski here to bring you the live coverage on JRTV of the Samsung Radio Shack 500 at the Texas Motor Speedway, one of the fastest tracks on the NASCAR Cup Series schedule, but also one of the most dangerous tracks on the Cup Series schedule. This is a track that historically has had a lot of caution flags and a lot of big wrecks. In fact, it has an average of three caution flags per race. However, last season in this race, we went caution free and the man who starts on pole this season, Riley Spirley Tube, found victory lane. Will we get another caution free spread out Texas race or will it be like more of the past where we've seen destruction and chaos throughout the 67 laps? Well, tune in, in over the next few minutes to find out right here on JRTV. It's a mixed up field of cars. It's a crazy starting lineup. At the front, you have the Robert Yates racing Fords ready to try and dominate this race. Riley Spurgeon looking for back-to-back -back Texas wins. Luke Rennie in the 88 alongside him as his teammate. With them behind on road two, a pair of unlikely drivers starting inside the top five. Jude Martinelli for Penske Jasper Racing, currently outside the top 20 in the point standings and looking to recover. He's been very inconsistent this season. However, a mile and a half at Texas is definitely what he's looking forward to as the next race. And to his outside is a Texan, Anthony Hernandez, in car number one. Hernandez hasn't been all that great at Texas in the past. However, he's happy to be back, looking forward to racing here, and has a fast race car, something that his two teammates haven't had in the qualifying session. And to complete the top five is the Runner-up for Martinsville last race, Matthew Burnett in the number 25. Patrick Morris sports a 1-2 at Martinsville with Keegan Thompson in victory lane, Matthew Burnett in second. However, that celebration for Burnett was short-lived because after the race, as his car went through inspection, NASCAR deemed it didn't fit the template. Hendrick Morris sports Jordan Edwards, the team owner, appealed the decision. However, the appeal failed, the penalty was upheld, and Burnett dropped in points severely from inside the top 10 to outside the top 20 due to the points penalty. Burnett though back here at Texas, one of his best racetracks and looking to go fast once again here at the Texas Motor Speedway and looking to avenge that DNQ that he had, or I guess DQ that he had at the Martinsville Speedway and looking to try and maybe get another win in a mile and a half track this season. He did so at Atlanta a few races ago. And then a lot of underdogs starting up towards the front of the field with great qualifying results. Joe Staubs in the number 51 starts inside the top 10 in sixth place. Baby Ruiz has a pair of top 10 finishes here, including a top five finish in this race last season. Ruiz is set to start 10th here today. Marcus Lerb starting in 12th position for that number 50 team. And how about Tegan Fox in the number 59 for BAM Racing? The only BAM car to make it today. Fox is inside the top 15 to start in 15th place, is looking to make her first start in a while worthwhile. Meanwhile, a lot of big names are mid-pack or further back. Jay Ren of the point leader who's had back-to-back -back 24th place finishes. He's seen his points lead dwindle. However, he's been very good here in the past. He has three finishes inside the top 10, including two runner-ups at this racetrack. Reno starts 17th and is looking to move his way through the field, trying to get there and get one spot better this season. Chris Jericho, Mathis Wells are the two drivers chasing him in points, but the Joe Gibbs duo start back in 20th and 21st. Not so great, however, Mathis Wells, one of the best here at the Texas Motor Speedway, will look to move through the field once again. He's already passed a net gain of 91 cars here at the Texas Motor Speedway. We'll see if he can add 20 more to that list here today. And even further, Further beyond then, you have many Roush racing drivers towards the back of the field. Zachary DeLello starts 22nd, Keyshawn Richardson in 27th, the list goes on and on. The only Roush car starting well today is Jordan Stout inside the top 10. The others like Tyler Belladonna was very good in practice, was the fastest, but he has to come from 18th on the grid to move his way through the field. That'll be a fun watch for sure. And even further back, Keegan Thompson, winner of the last race at Martinsville, is going to have to come through the field. Some big names at the back of the field on the last row. Evan Hunter filled inspection after qualifying. He starts 42nd. Eli Bright, one of the slowest cars here at the Texas Motor Speedway, starts in 41st. Hunter Reed for Petty Enterprise is back there. You also have three virtual children's racing cars starting outside the top 30. The only one of them starting up towards the front is Sarah Kirchner in 16th. There's a lot of movement that's going to be happening through the field over the course of this 
67 lap race and we're excited to get going here at the Texas Motor Speedway on JR TV. But before we get going a few minutes to the command, let's take a look at the track facts. Beautiful day for racing here at Texas, mostly clear skies, 73 degrees, a little bit of wind in the southeast direction for these drivers to deal with. This is a mile and a half racetrack, which is 2.41 kilometers. It's a 67 lap race, that's 100.5 miles. And the field window something to watch out for. They can't go too far past the midway point. However, they can make it on one stop. 36 to 40 laps. We'll see if that comes into play if we get any caution flags throughout the race. 24 degrees of banking in the corners. We'll see that as they fly through these corners at quick speeds. And 5 degrees of banking on the straights. And how about this? Ford has won the last three times here at the Texas Motor Speedway. Riley Spurge of last season, Keyshawn Richardson in 2002, and Matthew Brunett in 2001. The last time a non-Ford driver won here. It was Matt as well as in a Pontiac back in the 2000 season where he came from 42nd on the grid to win it. We'll have to see. Can Ford continue their dominance here at Texas? They have the front row locked out with two Robert Yates Racing Fords. The eight drivers that did not qualify going home here at the Texas Mars Speedway. Henry Guo in the zero, Max Davis in the 21, the 23 of Matt Tuck, Zachary Fitzwater Sr. for PPI's number 32, David Dixon the 39, Nathan Stapleton the 42, Colin Teague in the 49, and Angel Gutierrez in car number 70. Those are the eight drivers going home here today at the Texas Motor Speedway. But now it's time for the command. It's time to get these 4-2 drivers underway for 67 laps around the bad, fast Texas Motor Speedway. Let's go down trackside, fire these cars up. Drivers, start your engines. Car nine, Craig, when you're ready. Fire it up with your red fire up, fire it up. Garbage open. Forty-two cars rolling off the very narrow Texas Motor Speedway pit road to do battle in the Samsung Radio Shack 500. Before we get to the green flag, let's go to the audience pick to win from the JRTV.com poll, and they picked Matthew Burnett in the number 25 with 55% of the vote. But Burnett, a very solid pick. Not only is he starting inside the top five in fifth place. But he won here in 2001 and finished fifth here in 2002. Those are both with Roush Racing. Left we'll to see if he can bring the same sort of magic with Hendrick Motorsports. Remember, though, he did win at a mile and a half very similar to this track at Atlanta earlier in the season. And my pick to win from the same stable and just behind Matthew Brennan, it's Jerry Chen in the number 24. Recent results show that this might be a bad pick. Jerry Chen, in his last four races, he's finished 37th twice, 30th and 42nd. He was 7th in points entering into that stretch, but he leaves it 28th in the point standings. However, this is a track where equipment matters. Hendricks had very good equipment this season. Jerry Chen has a fire underneath him to go out here and perform, and he's going to get it done here today in the Samsung Radio Shack 500 for his first career victory at the Texas Motor Speedway. But there's 41 other drivers looking to get it done, including these two on the front row. Robert Yates Racing, Riley Spurgeon, Blue Granny leads to the green flag. It's waving in the wind. We're underway from Texas. Riley Sproge who jumped to an early gap, but Jude Martinelli got the runoff turn two. He's going to make it work on the bottom of the racetrack through three and four. Luke Grinney gets shoved high by Hernandez who goes to the middle. Up at the front, side by side for the lead, three wide for the back. Martinelli leads the first lap. Matthew Burnett moving to the inside to turn one. He'll grab the lead away. Jerry Chen, 24, now moves to the inside with Mitchell Collins in the 12. These cars are already going super fast off turn two and getting up towards the wall on the exit of two. Now up the back straightaway into turns three and four. Jerry Chen's going to take the lead away with Mitchell Collins. Martinelli climbs the hill. It was Lathan Strickland who got near him as cars once again climb up towards the wall. Jerry Chen leads in the number 24. Collins now moves low and gets by into turn one. And here comes Crown Jr. in the 43. Crown up to second. Zydell in the number two. And here comes the point leader, Jay Randall, already up inside the top five. And we're only two and a half laps into the race. Randall flying right now from 17th place on the grid, bringing Nathan Baird up to the front with them. The front of the field has gotten a little spread out. See at the line, two Penske Jasper cars inside the top three with Crown Jr. between them. Into turn one, Collins leading, Crown Jr. second, Zydell third. 
Zidell looking low for P2. Brando up to fourth. As he clears the, men, the, the madness behind. 300 cars lined up on the top. You have Nathan Bear moving low on them. Mathis Wells is coming up from 21st on the grid. Already up inside the top 10. Luke Rain start outside pole. Drop back early on, but now coming back alive. There goes the points leader for second, Jay Brando. Moving low, trying to get his third victory of the season. He's going to take that second spot away from Zidell, who suffered heartbreak last time out at Martinsville, where he had one of the dominant cars of the day. But unfortunately, a penalty on a restart dropped him out of the running. Same goes with Lathan Strickland. Those two back with the vengeance, currently both running up towards the front of the field. As you can see at the front, though, it's all Mitchell Collins in number 12. He still leads over Jay Brando. And here comes Bill Davis Racing's Nathan Baird to the inside. The team doesn't have much success this season, but Baird looking to put them on the map. He moves for second place, bringing Mathis Wells and all the others up into a train behind. See DeLello and Jordan Stout kind of started in different positions. Wells going three wide in that number 20, racing like he did back in 2000 when he won this race, wasting no time down to the bottom. As mentioned, his net gain at this racetrack from start to finish is 91 spots over four races. That's just incredible that he's gained 91 spots. A lot of that obviously came from when he had to start 42nd here a few seasons ago as that was close off turn two. Zydell and Baird almost rubbed and they were three wide with DeLello to the bottom. Luckily, they all kept it off each other and kept their cars going straight. See Martinelli coming back low as Baird and Crown Jr. I think they made contact there off turn number four. And luckily, Martinelli gave them just enough space. They made it work. And here come the three RCR cars that started outside the top 30. They're moving up inside the top 15. Kukulon, Evans, and Atkins all in a line together, moving up together. That's great to see. And how about Evan Hunter? Started 42nd here today. He was set to start 6th after qualifying. Then he failed inspection. But Evan Hunter has methodically worked his way up inside the top 15 and is absolutely flying up through the field. Top 10 is in his sights. He's going to get there, I think, by this lap. Look at Mathis Wells way high up the, out of the groove. He's driving positions and positions up front for the lead. There goes Luke Rainey. Luke on Collins into turns three and four. He's going to take it away, bringing Leighton Strickland to the bottom with him. So now Luke Rainey comes off the corner and leads here at Texas, trying to get the Texas sweep this season. One earlier at Texas World, just uh, up the road. Lathan Strickland hung, hungry for another win as well. Strickland up to second, and there's a Texan. Anthony Hernandez up in third. If he's up towards the front at the end, watch out for the field because uh, he's going to be very aggressive to anyone standing in his way of a Texas victory. Hernandez to third. Martinelli on teammate Collins. That's fourth and fifth. Martinelli's going to take the fourth spot away. Kukulon and Evans have moved up inside the top ten. Strickland going for the lead in turn one. And Evan Hunter from the back of the field. 42nd, he's up to 8th and going for more through turns 1 and 2. Great run for Evan Hunter. Lathan Strickland, he's never really been all that good here at the Texas Motor Speedway in his career. I mean, his finishes, he has 3 outside the top 30 and then a 12th place. And I'm sure he'd love to be more like the 12th place run, just a little bit better here today. He moves out in front. And how about a, a weird statistic is that Chevrolet has not won at this racetrack since 1997, and it came when Kevin Bandon in the number 24 went to victory lane. So Chevrolet, they've not been able to figure this place out. It's been Ford's playground as of late, but right now, with a Chevrolet leading and two Dodges behind, the first Ford is fourth place Luke Rainey on the outside lane, and there might be some more Chevys coming to the bottom to try and fill that hole. Here comes Comrade Evans once again. One of the drivers from RCR that started outside the top 30 here today, but right now he's running up near the top five. Kukulon's inside the top 10. They're moving. Points leader Jay Brando had dropped back, but starting to move his way back through the field. Just past Jordan Stout, his teammate. So back up to about 14th place. And just a few cars in front of him. Eli Bright started on the last row with Evan Hunter. He started 41st, was the second slowest car here. He was 49th in qualifying. Eli Bright now up inside the top 15. Now how about Chris Jericho? Number 18 car started near his teammate Mathis Wells. Wells started 21st, Jericho in 20th. The 18 fell back on the start because he was on the outside, but has moved his way up. He's up inside the top 10. For the lead, Jude Martinelli not going away, but he kind of slides wide. The tire's starting to wear out a little bit. He didn't have the grip. Strickland stays clear. And now Martinelli with his hands full from teammate Mitchell Collins. With the, uh, the lower spoiler 
on these cars this season. And the lower downforce, Goodyear's been able to bring a little bit more of an aggressive tire. In the past at Texas, we haven't seen all too much tire fall off. But here today, even with the pavement still being relatively smooth and new, that drivers have been saying over the course of the weekend, we're still seeing some pretty good tire fall off after about 10, 12, 15 laps. And this is about the time where it's really going to start to hit. You know, after 10 laps, they could still be running down around that 27 second lap mark. But it's about right now in the race where the lap times are going to start fading off. And by the end of a fuel run, which is, as mentioned, 36 to 40 laps, they could be running roughly a second and a half slower than they were running at the beginning of this race. Up at the front for the lead, Strickland has had it for a few laps, but it's going to get taken away by Mitchell Collins in the number 12. Collins moves out front trying to get just a, a solid run here today to get some momentum built up for this season. He's not had all that great of a season. Currently just one top 10 in his last 14 races. He's looking to change that here today as Keyshawn Richardson trying to get back to victory lane as Zydell made an aggressive three-wide move on Jericho and Strickland. Jericho trying to block Evan Hunter. He couldn't get that done. Hunter back to the inside. It's still some crazy racing up here at the front of the field. Keyshawn Richardson now moves to the front. 50 laps to go. He brings Matthew Burnett up to the inside, back to the lead. I mean, Burnett, he, he got shot of a cannon off turn number four. Got down to the inside, but great to see Keyshawn running well because this season has been the absolute opposite from what we're used to seeing. Normally one of those drivers that's up front winning races or at least being very, very consistent, but this season he's not won races and he's not been consistent. Very, very odd form for Keyshawn Richardson. He has five straight races without a top 10 finish. This is a man's Idell. We know he's hungry to get back to victory lane. Hasn't won since 2000 at the Darlington Raceway. But he's up to second right on the back bumper, hunting off Matthew Burnett, one of the drivers this season that broke a long winless drought. So maybe Zydell can try and join him. Those two pull away. Evans back up to third. Wells going for third. Going for the lead is Zydell, but he gets a little tight down low, has to lift. Matthew Burnett's going to keep that lead for now. Mathis Wells going to get to third, and here comes Jerry Chen back towards the front. Chen in the 24. Caution's out. We have a yellow... The 09 Skyler Taylor and Drew Webb have hit hard, and so is Tim Gary. Oh, and we have more on pit road. The 19 is all torn up. Laura Chung, Ryan Wilson, Samet Osgin as well. Lots of cars involved in this one. John Barrymore looks like as well. Maybe even Crown Jr. Tyler Belladonna might have some damage. So this was a pretty massive accident. Tim Gary, is, we're going to come down pit road with 47 laps to go. This is just in the fuel window. Or should be just outside of the field window. So we're going to be expecting these drivers to have to make another pit stop at some point today. But Tim Gary, a driver that's finished top 18 in every race so far this season. With that damage, I don't think that's going to continue. And his good runs in the past at Texas. He has an average finish of 10th here. That's going to change as well. So a lot of big names in that. They'll have to see what happens. It looks like a pretty big crash as Matthew Burnett leads them in to see is this is a narrow pit road we've seen contact on pit road here in the past as well so we have to watch out especially with how jumbled up the field has gotten some guys might be coming into their pit stall while others are leaving especially at this end of pit road so we have to be careful here be mindful like the one is coming in the 25 is about to leave so Matthew Burnett oh he hits him Hernandez hits Matthew Burnett Burnett's still gonna leave with the lead Zedell second Wells third but look at this log jam Crown Jr. and Lathan Strick gonna make contact on pit road like that's the major stuff for now. Luke Rennie's going to block Jericho off. Jerry Chun trying to get out in a quick manner. So how bad is the damage to the race leader? And how bad is it to the number one? There is some dent on the right side of that 25. But I think he might be fine to continue going at a good pace. Let's check out what happened. Caution flag is out for the first time here at the Texas Motor Speedway. Very big crash down the back straightaway and into turns three and four. Well, I had mentioned at the start, this is one of those racetracks where you can get some pretty scary accidents. Hunter Reed lifting to keep it out of the wall. Laura Chung can't check up at time, gets into Reed. Skyler Taylor's to the inside. Hard impact into the wall. Then Skyler Taylor hits 19 again. Upside down goes Chung. Taylor back up off the wall, wipes out Tim Gary and Baby Ruiz. And then watch this. The 19 is flipping and flipping and flipping. Belladonna hits Skyler Taylor. Look at Riley Spurly Tube. Delello's up against the wall, so is Crown Jr. The 19 comes up with the others. They clog the track. Barrymore, Webb, Osgin, and Wilson have nowhere to go. I mean, that is a scary, scary accident. And, I mean, for Tim Gary, you know, the uh, 
the 09 came out of nowhere for Riley Spurley tube. He saw a flipping number 19 in his, you know, windshield. I mean, that was an absolutely insane crash. As we'll go take a look a few more times at this crash. There's some big names involved, including Tim Gary, one of those drivers up there in the point standings. Here it is in real time. How Hunter just had to lift right there. Oh, that is a hard hit. And then that flipping. Oh, Skyler Taylor up the track. Look at Riley Spurley tube. He has an onboard, and I'd love to see that because that was that was crazy. But we have a few more angles of the 19. We'll look at that first, then go on board with a few drivers. Here they are off two. There's the contact, and here's that hit. Look at this. Oh, look at that 09 up the track. I still can't believe Riley Spurley tube there. I cannot believe that he found a way through that. That is absolutely insane. Let's go on board with the number 28 car. Pole sitter and winner of this race last season found a way through one in a magical way. Hold your breath, Spurly Tube fans, because this is as close as it comes. Oh, my goodness. One of those drivers trying to claw his way up in the points. That helps him right there. Now it's going to board Tim Gary. Going to be the complete opposite here today. And here's Tim Gary's view, but he's not going to see much because watch this 09 just come up the track. It wipes him out. He had nothing to do there. He could not avoid that at all. And unfortunately for Gary, pretty heavy damage. We'll have to see how much he can continue on. But going to drop in the points if he can't get a good result. But at the front, Matthew Burnett might have some damage as well. Can he nurse his car to a race victory once again? One lap from green here in the Samsung Radio Shack 500 at the Texas Motor Speedway, cleaning up that very major first accident of the day here at the Texas Motor Speedway. And something that most of these drivers out here that are going to be contending for the win do not like to see is only two cars that have gone to the garage because of that accident. Those two are obviously Laura Chung and Skyler Taylor, the two that started the crash. And for Laura Chung, she cannot catch a break this season. Her average finish 27.8, 34th in the points. And, I mean, this was a track she's looking to turn around at. She has two top tens here, and fortunately, she's going to end the day in 42nd. And, but we have some cars out there towards the back that are damaged and could play a role in the end of this one. So we have Matthew Burnett in the lead. He has right side damage from a pit road accident. Second place is Idell. Matthew as well as has some left side damage in third, so watch for that. Then you have Evans in fourth. Eli Bright is up in fifth. Collins sixth. Brando, the points leader, seventh. Strickland 8th, Richardson 9th, Evan Hunter up inside the top 10. They have Luke Rennie 11th, Atkins 12th, Jericho 13th, Kukulon 14th, Jordan Stout in 15th, Nathan Norman having a good run in 16th. But at the back, Belladonna has damage, Drew Webb all torn up. Uh, the number 14, Barrymore has damage, Tim Gary has damage, so does Osgin and Ryan Wilson Crown Jr., maybe some others as well. So watch for these guys at the back. How slow will they be? Green flag back in the air in the Samsung Radio Shack 500. Great jump for Burnett. He gets away, but now these tires are fresh. They're new. They're going to be running very fast speeds around this Texas Motor Speedway. We're going to be seeing some crazy racing over the next 10 to 15 laps as they start to build speed off turn two. Zidell closing in into the inside of Burnett up the back straightaway. He got a good restart. Zidell timed it well. He moves to the front through turns three and four. Here comes Comrade Evans to the inside. Evans has a great run of momentum off turn number four. He moves low with the stripe. Zidell continues to lead, but Evans getting a big push from Zidell's teammate Mitchell Collins. All he can take into turn one. And maybe a little bit too much. He slid a little wide. Collins looking lower off turn number two at full speed. Oh, we saw an accident off there a few laps ago. We almost saw one there. Burnett and Wells and Jericho nearly came together. They kept their cars going straight in a three-wide scenario. We stay green for now. At the front, Collins now leads. Eli Bright in second. Keisha Richardson moving to third. Remember, Eli Bright, second slowest car here in qualifying. And he started all the way back in 41st here today. And he was going to start 42nd, if not for Evan Hunter failing inspection. Evans and Zidell nearly come together. But they keep it going straight. Eli Bright at the front. Moves to the lead on lap number 26. The DEI fans happy to see one of their drivers up at the front. But here comes Jericho to the inside. At the stripe. Side by side to lead that lap. Give it to Eli Bright by a few one thousandths of a second. According to the timing and scoring. There was no other way to know that other than the computer telling you. Kukulon, just like Evans, had to come from the back of the field. He's moving low nicely. Hunter Reed is up inside the top 10 for that number 45 team. He's moving up nicely from a very poor starting spot. Outside the top 35. 
And Jordan Stout, the only roush car to start well here today, has continued to race well. Stout going for the lead. His teammate and points leader Jay Randall looking for some bonus points towards the championship standings. Stout doesn't want that though. He's been starting to slowly gain back the points that he's really lost at the beginning of the season. So Stout wants to have a good result here and keep Randall from getting whatever points he can. Now they're side by side off four, but I think Stout has enough ahead. Six is going to lead the lap. They're four wide into turn one. Shuffle that with Zydell and Wells. Luckily, Jacob Miller and Evans did not come together. I think Evans maybe lifted a little bit right there. At the front, the points leader back to the lead. Oh, they're wrecking in the back. Yellow's out again. And it's a big crash into turns three and four. Joe Stubbs is on his side. The 51 on top of the 43 and upside down he goes. DeLello's in it. Crown Jr. Stubbs with the worst of it. Eli Bright involved. He might have been one of the first to go around. I think Riley Spurgeon missed another one. Caution flag is out. Hunter Reed led them back. That's important towards the championship. There's teammates rubbing together there as they're trying to sort it out here. And this might be an opportunity for them to come down pit road. Just take fuel here and maybe make it to the end. This is once again questionable. The fuel window is 36 to 40 laps. They're going to pit with 37 laps to go. So they're technically within it, but you have to pack it full. So I think everyone's going to be coming down here. And here they come. Hunter Reed leading the field in and a lot of cars. You see Hunter Reed, one of the first pit stalls as he's taking tires. But, I mean, having a, an early pit stall here is going to be bad on this pit stop because you're probably only taking about two tires. Is Idell involved in that? So was Strickland. Stobbs, obviously, once again, we mentioned probably the worst of it. So what are they going to do? Is it just going to be two tires? I think it is with how fast some of these guys are getting out. Jerry Chen is going to go with four. So mixed strategy on pit road. Keegan Thompson is going to lead the field off with two tires. And then a land rush coming off pit road. Anthony Hernandez was in it as well. I think Matthew Burnett. Jude Martinelli has damage in the 77. Cars coming off pit road. I mean, this field is thinning out in a mixed bag of strategy. Some took two, some took four. The two tire guys are going to get out front. Keegan Thompson leads Jay Rando off pit road, but it was four tires for some guys back here. We'll have to see. Jerry Chen took four, and so did Evans and some of these guys. So this could be a fun restart. How do the two tires hold up versus the four tires? We'll go check out what happened. Another big crash here. Texas Motor Speedway sends another competitor upside down in turns three and four. There had been some aggressive racing for the two and the 20 lap after lap. Mathis Wells kind of washes up right there off turn two. Zydell sees a hole, tries to fill it, but he gets into Mathis Wells, down into Martinelli. That's two Penske Jasper cars. They're going to take a hard hit into the inside concrete. Up the track for Barrett and Mathis Wells. Nowhere to go for Eli Bright. Ahmed Wald, who had had a very solid stretch of races. Zach Delello. Look at Riley Spurgeon right in the middle of it again. And I think he misses it again. Luke Rainey, a slight tap right there. Evan Hunter goes high. There you see the track clogged on the outside. Staubs goes up on his side. Burnett, Crown Jr., and all these others start piling in. Eli Bright trying to drive away. Now the 51 on his side, basically on top of Crown Jr. He's going to send the 43 up into Ahmed Wallid. The 51 goes for a flying tumble. Crown Jr. up on his side, comes off onto his tires, and then back on his side. Stalves continues to flip. Crown Jr. on his side on the banking, and luckily comes back down to earth. But a lot of cars involved in this one. Once again, a very big crash in turns three and four. Ignited between contact with Justin Zidell and Mathis Wells. And oh, under the caution, Ormond and Atkins made contact. So I don't know if Atkins was mad at Ormond or if Ormond was mad at Atkins. We'll have to See if we can get a view of that, but some contact there as well. We'll go take a look at this wreck again. This is a portion of the racetrack in you know, very recent memory that has been just a, a trouble spot. Exit of turn two, and you can see it right there. I mean, that is insane. What a tumble. Look at it from another angle. From turn three, looking down the back stretch. Here's another view. Zydell Wells racing aggressively for about 15th. And it is on from there. 
look at that 51 though. Oh my goodness. I mean, it was like they were picking up speed in that. That was absolutely insane. Let's go on board with Riley Spiro Tube. He missed another one in that number 28 car. This is probably the most impulsive series ever have to gone through the race at the Texas Motor Speedway, but right here, Riley Spiro Tube Armageddon again in front of him, but he finds a way methodically to go through it, and he misses the crash. Riley Spiro did a great job there in the number 28 car. He's still in it to win it. The pole shooter coming from some adversity here today at Texas. The Samsung Radio Shack 500 under the second caution flag is coming back to the green flag at just about the midpoint. And we have, once again, a jumbled up field. Some on two, some on four. Guys who start at the back, guys who start towards the front. They're all coming together right here at the Texas Motor Speedway. A lot more cars to the garage and done for the day. They include the number 15 of Ryan Wilson, 51 Joe Staubs, 43 Crown Jr., 91 Ahmed Wallet. Then you have the 48 of Lathan Strickland, 7 Bibby Ruiz, and a few cars one lap down. Pre McShane's a lap down, so is Nathan Baird, and so is Justin Zidell. In fact, Zidell is currently lined up in the sixth position on the racetrack, but is a damaged car that is a lap down. We'll have to see how that impacts. We have 31 cars on the lead lap. A lot of those are damaged, though, now because of that last very, very massive crash. In fact, Eli Bright in 19th is very damaged. Tim Gary's in 21st. He could still get a top 18 out of this if things keep going the way they are. But at the front, Keegan Thompson, Jay Reno, Hunter Reed, Keyshawn Richardson, and Jordan Stout. They're separated by a lap car. Then you have Sarah Kirchner, Jacob Miller, Riley Spirit, who's been around everything today, Jerry Chen, Mitchell Collins, and some of these guys back here that are on four tires. Let's see how they can try and get through the field. Green flag back in the air. We're back going. Justin Zidell very damaged. He's off the pace. He goes low. Everyone's going to try and go high around him into turns one and two. And Kukulon tried to make a move to the bottom, but didn't know the two was going to be down there. Now Zidell's holding up Kukulon. He's holding up Luke Rainey. Holding up Benny Lynn as well. Oh, watch out. Oh, my gosh. The 40 almost came up and wiped out the 36. Evan Hunter had to lift there. And now Zidell's high and holding up Luke Rennie and Evan Hunter. This is not what Hunter wanted because I think that car is actually pretty clean compared to a lot of the cars that are passing him and around him right now. The so car's getting held up, but luckily it was very few. At the front, three wide. Kirchner on Stout and Hunter Reed. Jay Randall got to lead the last lap for five points. And now his teammate Keyshawn Richardson moves back low in the number 99. And Richardson's going to take it away through turns three and four. But maybe not quite yet. Here comes Keegan Thompson with a flyer off turn four. But the 99 got to lead the lap, but the five is the preferred lane. They are racing very aggressively for about fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, all the way back to about 13th or 14th. Oh, look at Kircher. She got really high off turn two. Kept it out of the wall, though. And they're still side by side for the lead. Thompson has not been able to clear Richardson, and Richardson can't clear Thompson. Three wide for third. Collins on the inside, Spurly Tube in the middle. At the strike this time, Richardson kept the lead in the 99. I think that's the case of two tires here. It's a little bit harder to maybe make that inside lane work. But I think Thompson's eventually going to have it done. 30 laps to go at the line. See how the pack's now thinning out because of some damaged cars and how everyone's running. Yeah, but the, the issue is that some of those damaged cars are going to be so slow that they could end up being very, very bad in terms of how these race leaders try to get around. Collins getting a big push from behind from Chris Jericho into turn one. Nearly got beneath Keegan Thompson. Might still get beneath him into turns one and two. There he goes. Thompson at the track. Collins to the end with help from Jericho. Big pack of cars racing up onto a lap car in turns three and four. And I think that might be, yeah, Pre McShane. Here goes Jericho. I think earlier on when he tried to go to the lead, he didn't get to lead that lap. So right here, big for him, five bonus points. He and Jay Brando, first and third in points. So Jericho trying to get whatever he can today to gain on Jay Brando. Atkins to the lead. He's had a history of winning on these mile and a half tracks in the past. And here he is from a poor starting spot up inside the top five to the lead. And Jacob Miller. Who's had a bad start to the season for Evan and Morris Sports, but looking strong here at Texas. We catch Nathan Baird off turn number four. Oh, my God. Splitting him through the quad oval. That takes guts. And Jay Randall gets halted. Randall and Riley Spurley, two of the cars that are out of it right now. Another one, Jordan Stout. They're going to move low, but they've lost time. They're going to need probably a caution flag or some more lap traffic to get involved. Oh, Miller sliding. 
Prima Shane's gonna come down Prima right. I like that call. She was about to get lapped. She did not want to get involved or a part of this in any way. She moved out of the way. Classy there by the double zero driver and crew. And Jacob Miller got to lead that last lap in a very close manner. Almost contact between Miller and Thompson. Jerry Chen to the inside of the number 24 car. Once again, Chen trying to recover after four finishes in a row of 33rd worst. Dropped him 21 spots in the point standings. And here comes Kukul on RCR in a winless drought. In fact, I think, what was it, the only RCR driver to win last season, what was it, was Atkins twice and Evans once. And then you have to go back to the beginning of 2002 for when they won again, so, and then obviously Atkins, so. Been a long time for Kukulon and RCR in general. They're looking to turn it around here, but right now, Jacob Miller doing a great job in the lead, trying to hold it. Kukulon trying to run down. And here comes Benny Lynn. Benny Lynn moving up for that number 40 car. He's had, he's had some very good runs as of late, this number 40 car. He's had back-to-back -to -back top 15s in this season for the first time since 2001. And here he is, up in third, looking for his third straight top 15, maybe even better. He goes for second. And back outside this lead group, the three cars that got halted, they're now well back. Evan Hunter's moving up. He's up to 16th. Nate Norman, 17th, and Tim Gary is currently inside the top 18. As we catch now, Jacob Miller goes around the outside of Zydell, and Benny Lynn and Jerry Trent get halted, but I think they're going to be in the preferred lane off turn two here. Well, Benny Lynn would have if he stayed low, but Jerry Chen moves low first. He's going to get by Zydell, who almost came down in front of the 24. Zydell's through. Or excuse me, Jerry Chen's through. Zydell is uh, on the outside holding up Lynn, holding up Jericho, holding up Keegan Thompson. Lynn's going to shoot to the middle in the quad oval. Figured he was losing too much time. Five got by and the 18 of Jericho not too happy with what the two did right there. I think as a lead lap car, you're just hoping that the lap car you catch is holding its line and Zydell kind of did change lanes a few times in that, but it's, it's a hard place to uh, to be a lap car. As we'll see right here is 929. They get away by a nice margin. They're catching two cars now. The one of Fernand, three cars. One, 25, 59. Miller's going to look around the outside of the one. And this gives him the space. But now Burnett and Fox, they're going to go side by side. So where, where can Miller go here? Oh, I thought he was going to try and shoot the middle right there. He just kind of has to pick a lane and hope it works. He's getting aggressive, though. He's looking to the middle. I mean, listen, Miller's never won in the next Hill Cup Series. This could be a big day as Jerry Chen almost got run over by Richardson. This could be a really big day for Miller if he could try and hold on here, but there's lap traffic all around him, so he's having a tough time right now. There's more up the road. It's Nathan Baird again. 20 laps to go to the line. Miller's clear of traffic. That's big because everyone else is halted right now, but now the 9 stuck by the 22. This could bring a lot of cars back into this race. See Jericho's back. Randall and Sproley too, but I think that's Evan Hunter back there who's gaining. He might be back as well. So the nine is through, he's gotten away to a nice gap, but now Richardson is by most of the madness. So is Evans, so is Collins, Atkins and Lynn. Oh, look at that mess back there with the 22. Holding up with Matthew Burnett, Tegan Fox on the outside. Kirchner and Spurley too. Jerry Chen's in the middle trying to get by. See Evan Hunter, he's joined this pack and he's gotten around. So from being held up on the, on the restart to now being in, in a shot to win this possibly. Yeah, because there he is. He's not that far back. At the front, a few cars got away. Jacob Miller got away the most. He's out front by a second over Keyshawn Richardson. Then Collins in third. Benny Lynn in fourth. Fifth is Jericho. Thompson sixth. Kukulon seventh. You have Evans in eighth. Hunter Reed ninth. Jay Randall currently holding the final spot inside the top ten. Then Evan Hunter is up to 11th. What a run through the field he's had after this restart. And about three tenths gain for Richardson last lap. He's closing in using some of that draft, and I think just a faster car overall. Mason Miller entering into turns three and four. Battle is on for third. Benny Lynn takes it from Mitchell Collins through turns three and four. So Benny Lynn having once again a very solid run in. Right now, could be one of the fastest cars out here. Here comes Chris Jericho. Just barely finished inside the top 10 last race at Martinsville. He's looking for his fifth straight top 10 on the season. 
currently in a good spot to do it up in fourth and really a good ways ahead of tenth and all the others behind. Just some other drivers back there that got held up and still trying to catch up like Kirchner, Spurly Tube, Jordan Stout. Then the first of the damage cards is Jude Martinelli in 17th. Zach Delello's back there, so is Nathan Norman, so is Tim Gary. Then Luke Rennie, and then you have some very, very slow cars. And obviously cars that are already lapped down are even slower, but you have guys down here like Marcus Lurb and Eli Bright, John Barrymore, Samit Osgood, Mathis Wells, Tyler Belladonna, Drew Webb as well. But at the front, this number 40 car is fast. He caught the front two, and now is going to pass Richardson. Benny Lynn has one of the strongest cars here today. Can he hold on is the question. Lynn up to second. And maybe the fastest car here is Evan Hunter. He's gotten to the top ten and he's flying. He's moved by a bunch of cars. He's up to seventh place. I think he's one of them that's on four tires. Same with Jerry Chen. I think the four tires are starting to play out now as we get into this run. You can see Evan Hunter, he's flying. Hunter moves low on Chris Jericho. That would be for sixth place. Jericho once again may be content to just let these guys go. He just wants to finish around Jay Rando to keep the points at a minimum. Evan Hunter's trying to gain points back that he lost for Martinsville. There he had an issue on that car and had to come down Pivot. Jerry Chen moving up, trying to get by Evan Hunter. Back up to the front because Benny Lynn closing up on Jacob Miller. Oh, caution's out. Into turn one, they're wrecking. Can the leaders avoid it? Nathan Bear coming down the racetrack. That could have been a disaster. The leaders were coming by. And now we're going to have a restart with under 10 laps to go. Well, that probably takes lap traffic out of the equation because Baird was the slowest car. And now we're going to have a restart with under 10 to go. Do they pit here? Do they have the fuel to make it or do they think they have to pit? Could you imagine pit stops coming down late in this race? Looks like some might be thinking about it. Jacob Miller might be thinking about it he's going to there are cars coming down the pit lane oh what a mixed bag what Eli Bright was involved in that the eights on paper with a lot of damage oh Evans as well John Barrymore so this was a lot bigger you see the 41 also on pit road so who's gonna be the first off of these guys and where do they come out are there gonna be damaged cars they have to get around they're gonna take four tires in this number nine car they want the grip well, we, we mentioned at the top of the show, Texas averages three cautions. We got our third right there, and a lot of cars, it looks like, were actually involved in that. We thought it was maybe just the 22, but either cars piled in after the caution was already out, or that, that was just the 22 was a, a part of something bigger. But there's the nine. First off with four tires. We'll have to see. The two's obviously lapped down, but some of these guys are damaged, and they're staying out. So there's going to be a lot of cars the nine has to come through. I don't know about that strategy call, but it hands the lead to... Number 40, Benny Lynn. So we'll have to watch for the guys that came down, though. Right? Number 9, 99, 12, 97, 45, 33, 5, 6, 28. We'll have to see what they can do. But Benny Lynn currently in the lead, trying to hold on. We'll have to go check out what happened. Third caution flag is out here at the Texas Motor Speedway. A lot to unpack here. A very violent crash here at the Texas Motor Speedway. Nathan Baird, car number 22. Once again, the slowest car out there. Smith Oscar is also slow coming around him in a fast manner, and Baird just doesn't know he's on the outside, squeezes Osgood into the wall. Nathan Baird spins around. Now, here's the interesting part of this, is that th th this was the part we saw. The caution flag had come out, the leaders are going to come by, and Nathan Baird does a great job right here holding the brakes to keep that car out there, because look, at there goes the 9 and the 40, the 99, some of our race leaders, but Nathan Baird is sitting here for a long time. A very, very long time. And everyone's getting around him. I don't know if Evans didn't see him or what, but he hits Baird right there and goes spinning. So Conrad Evans, one of our lead lap cars, he was running 15th at the time of caution, gets involved. And there had to be something that was laying over there because nothing really explains what happens here. Because here comes Conrad Evans, right? He's trying to get the car back on to at least get back to pit road, see if they can salvage the car or if it's done. And in comes Ormond. And he nails Evans. Here comes Martinelli. He nails Evans. Then Ormond gets nailed by DeLello. And there goes the 41 flying through the air. Luke Rennie hits DeLello. Here comes Tim Gary in the number 10. He hits Ormond to send them flipping even more. 
I mean, there had to be stuff on the racetrack because it's it's still not over. This is still not the end of it. Tim Gary sent there by Evans, right? The 10 can keep going, it looks like. The 31's out of commission. But Tim Gary's sitting there. He's going to start to get going here. And as he starts to come up, there's going to be another few cars involved in this. Because here comes Eli Bright. And Eli runs into him. And then John Barrymore runs into Eli. And then Tyler Belladonna gets hit by Eli and runs into John Barrymore. Here comes Drew Webb and Mathis Wells. Webb runs into Belladonna. Mathis Wells just kind of taps off the 84 right there and says, I'm going to get on going. But there was a lot that happened there. And I just, I have to think something was down the racetrack because that's a lot of people to, to just not slow down for something to have not been on the racetrack from the 22 or the 31. So a lot happening there. We'll go take a look at this very, very long crash that never wanted to end it one more time in full speed. Here's another view with a lot unfolding. Baird squeezes Osgin, goes for a wild slide. Here come the leaders who miss. And here comes Evans. He hits Baird. I just can't believe a spotter didn't tell him. That's why I have to think something was on the track from the 22 and then maybe from the 31 to cause this. Because, I mean, everyone just came piling in. And once again, even after that, still not over. Right? I mean, we're waiting a long time for even more damage cards to come around and run into this. So, a destructive day here at the Texas Motor Speedway. And did this shake up the uh, the running order and just the, the end of race picture? Because some of our leaders, th without this caution, probably weren't going to be able to make it on fuel. So they come down, and it leaves Benny Lynn for Chip Ganassi Racing in the race lead. Does he have the fuel to make it? And can he hold on? Can the drivers that came down for four fresh tires find a way through the field? We'll go back with under 10 laps to go in the Samsung Radio Shack 500 here at the Texas Motor Speedway. Lights are out atop the Pontiac pace car and hold your breath and pull those belts tight for what's sure to be a crazy run to the checkered flag. Guys out there on old tires and possibly low fuel. Guys out there on four tires with the fuel they know to make it. This is going to be an entertaining restart here from the Texas Motor Speedway. Add a lot more cars to the garage and done for the day. Baird is out. Barrymore, Bright, Gary. So that, that breaks his string of good results this season of top 18 finishes. Orman's out. Evans is out. Zydell's two laps down, still running. He's going to gain a lot more spots. Delello's out. So is Belladonna. So is Luke Rainey. We have 24 cars running, 20 cars on the lead lap. Last of them is Jordan Stout. The guys that pitted are 12th on back. Jacob Miller, Keyshawn Richardson, Mitchell Collins, Jay Rando, Hunter Reed, Riley Spirit, Sarah Kirchner, Keegan Thompson, and Jordan Stout all came down the pit lane. 11th on up stayed out. Some of those are damaged cars like Osgin, Wells, Webb, Lerb, Martinelli. So 7th to 11th, possibly won't be able to get going. This could be a six-car race unless some of those guys back there that took tires can get through the field. So the six that stayed out that are not damaged, Benny Lynn, Special Kukulon, Evan Hunter, who's been through hell and back, Jerry Chen, who's been through a lot here today, Chris Jericho, and Justin Atkins. That's the top six for the restart, which will come on lap number 59. Green flag back in the air at Texas. The bad thing for those guys back there, they don't only have to get by the guys in the lead lap, but there's guys that are a lap down they have to get by as well. That's why I think this is just a six-car race. Chen moves through the third. There you can see the log jam of cars behind. And so far, no one that has gotten tires has been able to get by. This is a six-car race unless a caution flag comes out. Benny Lynn trying to hold on and win. Sebastian Kukulon is there. Jerry Chen also there. Two guys at the front looking for their first ever wins in the Nextel Cup Series. They're first and third, looking to be first and second. Here comes Chen on Kukulon. Oh, but he doesn't have the grip. Those tires are older now. It's going to be harder to make passes work. See some guys with new tires are flying by some damaged cars and slower cars back there. But Jacob Miller's one of them and Keyshawn Richardson. They're flying, but they, I don't think they have the time to make the ground up, even though their tires are fresher. They either need a caution to come out very quickly, or they need these guys to run dry on fuel. And Benny Lynn is hoping he can hold on. Seven laps to go. 
Can he win for the first time in the Nextel Cup Series and win for the first time in a long time for Chip Ganassi Racing? Jerry Chen is tr trying his hardest as well. Evan Hunter is dropping off in sixth. I don't know if he's being told to save fuel or if he just wore the tires off the car before this caution flag came out because he was driving very aggressively from the restart onwards. Chen for second, six laps to go. Miller and company are 3.9 seconds back with six to go. Richardson, the first guy on tires. Chen is through to second. Can he be the one to hunt down Benny Lynn? Jericho to third. He's getting by Kukulon. Justin Atkins trying to get by teammate Kukulon. And they come close off four. Five laps to go. Yellow flag would end the Samsung Radio Shack 500 short. Three and a half tenths between the front two. Six tenths chopped off the lead from Richardson up to these guys. Jacob Miller as well is gaining. Riley Spruage as well. But as they battle for third place, it's a two-car race at the front. Benny Lynn and Jerry Chen. I have to think, as Evan Hunter and Justin Atkins battle for third here, I have to think that four-tire call to come down pit road would have been the right one if there wasn't damaged lap cars in the middle because they are flying. They might actually get up to this group, but I don't think they have enough time to get by them all and get up to these front two, which have distanced themselves. Four laps to go. Benny Lynn, Jerry Chen, two drivers that have never won in the next Dell Cup Series. They've pulled a gap over a bunch of race winners behind. It's going to be down to these two if they have the fuel to make it. Remember, one of the drivers that ran out of field in this race last season after dominating Smash Kukulon, currently in fourth right now. At the front, the lead is tightening up. Richardson's right there with Jacob Miller. They, they're going to get some spots out of this, but I don't think they're going to get the win with three to go. They see the nine, the nine, nine. They're catching Drew Webb. A perfect time for him with the 24 to make a move, but Lynn cuts him off, scrapes off Drew Webb, but gets by right in time. Two laps to go to the line. Webb's going to give everyone the bottom. That's good. That's what everyone wants. See the 999. They had to get checked up big time. Two laps to go. Chen right on Lin. It's going to be one of these two to win their first ever race in the next Dell Cup Series here today. The question is which one? Benny Lin for Chip Ganassi Racing or Jerry Chen for Hendrick Motorsports? White flag this time by. Benny Lin goes high. Here comes Jerry Chen to the inside. Off turn number four. They're side by side to the quad oval. Here's the white flag in the final lap in the Samsung Radio Shack 500. We catch Martinelli. Jerry Chen's around him. Jerry Chen gets around Martinelli. Jacob Miller on fresh tires is closing in with Jay Rando. However, Jerry Chen has gone off turn two. Up the back straightaway for the final time. Jerry Chen. Four straight finishes of 30th or worse this season, but it's going to pay off with victory lane in Texas. Jerry Chen wins the Samsung Radio Shack 500. And Jacob Miller drove to second at the end. I mean, I tell you what, this race had every, every curveball that could get thrown in a race. And Jerry Chen wins for the first ever time in the Nextel Cup Series. That is now four of the five Hendrick drivers that have gone to victory lane. The only one that hasn't is the rookie who's still probably learning the ropes. And Oh, that is sweet for Jerry Chen. He's had a very, very dismal stretch of races. And as mentioned, he started the season very well, was inside the top 10 in points, but immediately you know, free-falled down to 28th. This is going to tr uh, jump him up a few spots in points for sure, but... I really want to give a call to some of those drivers that took tires and really drove through the field on that on that restart. If they had another lap or two, it could have been one heck of a show because they were coming, coming, coming. And I mean, oh, man. That, that, that's just one of those th those calls, right, where you'd want to see what happened if, if they didn't have as many cars to go through on the restart, right? If some of those lap down cars maybe pitted guy out of the way and they only had to get by some other guys. See, Martinelli, I think, actually got involved in a wreck there either on the white flag or after the checker flag. I don't know. We'll have to check out what happened there. But let's actually go take a look now at the finishing results from the Samsung Radio Shack 500. Jerry Chen on top right when it counted. He got around lap traffic the best, and he bests Benny Lynn here today. Jacob Miller came from 12th place on that restart. Had to get by so many more cars than just 11. He ends up in second here today. Definitely his best run of the season, and 
a strategy call that maybe could have worked out if not for just a few less lap cars on the restart. Benny Lynn, probably the most impressive driver of the race, took a Chip Ganassi racing car nearly to victory lane. He had the lead all the way at the white flag, but unfortunately Martinelli got in the way. Lynn has to sell for third. Jay Brando ends up in fourth. The points are just going to extend that points lead as he took tires and drove through the field at the end. Sarah Kirchner also drove through the field at the end. She gets a top five. Jordan Stout came from 20th on the restart. He ends up in sixth. He also drove through the field with those fresh tires. Chris Jericho, one of the few guys that was able to hold on to a top 10 on the old tires. So Jericho minimizes the points loss to Jay Brando. Hunter Reed was on fresh tires. He ends up in eighth. Brown Spirit went through everything today. He ends up in ninth. And Evan Hunter went through hell. Started last and had so much stuff happen to him. He ends up in 10th. Mitchell Collins ends up in 11th. Kukulon, Richardson. Richardson was on tires, but I think got forced to the high side there. Keegan Thompson there. You see Justin Atkins and then cars that were damaged. Marcus Lurb, Mathis Wells. I mean, he continues his, uh, his net gain. Uh... <laughs> uh positions because remember his net gain from start to finish at Texas 91 spots and he gained what was that I guess four more here today so net gain 95 when I was gonna last car in the lead lap then Martinelli lap down Drew Webb a lap down Matthew Burnett Tegan Fox with a very solid day in the lap down 22nd for that number 59 Hernandez and Zidell the 25th on down out from crash damage some nobles down there Luke Rainey started outside pole Hello Bell down to one of our Texans DeLello up there in the points. Tim Gary had a very solid start to the season. This is really his first bad race. Eli Bright in the number eight had to start back in 41st. Nathan Strickland up there in the point standings. And all the way down to drivers like Skyler Taylor, Lord Chung. It felt like a lifetime ago when those crashes happened, but they're the last two cars out in this race. We'll now go take a look at the points. Nine races into it. Jay Randall continuing to hold that point. So he's, he's been almost unbeatable this season, but Chris Jericho keeping him at arm's width and some other drivers trying to stay close as well. But Randall's points had to come down for the last few races, but he picks it right back up with a, a very impressive result here today and a very great drive through the field. I thought, you know, after those guys pit and all the cars they had to go through, I thought they kind of just threw away top 10, top five days, but a few of them did end up driving up into the top five there at the end. So... They made it work, but just ran out of time to get to the race there. Jerry Trinity really distanced himself in lap traffic. But after the craziness of Texas, how about we go to another crazy racetrack as we go racing at Montreal, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve for the Napa Auto Parts 300. The first ever time the Nextel Cup Series will visit that road course in Canada. It is going to be a fun one for sure. We'll see how the field does at Montreal in one week's time right here on JRTV. First road course action we'll see of the season. Congratulations today to Jerry Chen Hendrick Motorsports on winning the Samsung Radio Shack 500, the first win for Chevrolet and Hendrick since 1997 here at the Texas Motor Speedway. We'll see you guys on JRTV next week from Montreal.